Hi, so I'd like to spend a little bit of time going over OS Tree and using that for Atomic Host uh, for upgrades, rollbacks, package installs, and creating your own custom content and so forth. So I'm just going to go ahead and get right to it and talk about my environment. So I have essentially a main server here in the middle. It is a Pixie server. It's also hosting some repositories. And at the end of this video, we will set up a Compose server and we'll see what that is. Uh, this could be a VM, it could be several servers. Uh, I just happen to combine them on a one at the, uh, for this environment. And just to show that I have full bare metal uh, Pixie bootstrapping, uh, which can extend to virtual machines as well, I've included a couple of each. So before I jump right in, one thing I'd like to talk about is sort of the initial setup. So I have a satellite server, which is serving Pixie out for my environment. That can be anything you want, just to serve out the initRD and um, the VM Linux off of the install ISO. So you can grab that from the customer portal and get the latest rel atomic host image. Or if you are just playing around and you want to use the latest development a CentOS image, you can do that as well. And I'll include the link down below. But essentially, you get the image, you mount it, copy it somewhere, and just serve out the initRD and VM Linux. Uh, but then you'll need to also export it via HTTP as it contains um, all of the files necessary to set up the initial tree on the uh, first image. So you have to mount this, as I said, and uh, just serve it out. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is the Kickstart file itself. So a really nice thing is that Anaconda Kickstart has uh, the ability to allow you to set up OS, OS trees for the initial setup. So the only difference between standard Kickstart files is this line here. This is the OS tree setup, uh, which is taking some parameters to describe the, the name of the tree, the remote. And in this case, as I mentioned, it's going to be, uh, point, what, at the time that it's booted up, it's going to be pointing to a local uh, squash FS image, uh, which is going to contain the initial OS tree. Uh, and then we're going to give it a reference here. Now, I do have a, a couple of Pix Pixie entries. I have one for RHEL Atomic Host, as you saw there. And this one here is for CentOS Atomic Host. Um, and of those four servers, I'm going to go ahead and boot one of those up with RHEL Atomic Host. But there are some additional features available in the latest development image of CentOS. So I'm going to use that for the majority of the demo. But I just wanted to show that these are just standard Kickstart files. Okay, uh, now let's just pull up the consoles for my different servers. So I have my virtual machines over here. You can see one is running CentOS development. The other is running RHEL uh, Atomic Host. And using the, the consoles here to just sort of display what's happening when they reboot and so forth. Uh, but for the large majority of, of what I'll be doing, I'm just going to go ahead and SSH in um, and leave these kind of as reference in the background. Uh, for the bare metal systems, I do have two IBM blades. Um, and I also wanted to take note of the host names here. So that way, when we're SSH into different systems, uh, it, it'll be easy to track based on uh, what I've named them here. So we have an IBM blade which is IBM Blade 12, and then we also have 11, which is similarly configured, uh, both of these with uh, the, the CentOS Atomic Host image. Okay, uh, so let's jump right in. The uh, first thing I want to do is just talk a little bit about provisioning these systems. You will have to bootstrap these systems, whether they're VMs or virtu virtual uh, machines or bare metal systems, somehow. So as I showed just now, we're going to use Kickstart. You could use some other system as well. Uh, so let's start with connecting to our rel atomic host and just show you uh, based on the release what we're running here. I actually have a script I've written that will just uh, overwrite the boot record on the hard drive, which I have set to primary boot item. Um, it's going to reboot that, that uh, second VM and it's going to attempt hard drive boot, but it's going to fail. And so I have as my second boot item, Pixie. So this allows me to non-interactively uh, script my reinstalls if I need to bootstrap the system from scratch. Now, this is not a feature of OS Tree. I'm just talking about how I have my environment set up. Uh, this usually is only going to happen one time, unless something has gone catastrophically wrong. But I, I would like to point out that you, you do need that bootstrap somehow. So you do have to distribute the initial OS Tree image onto the systems, and this is how I'm accomplishing it. Okay, while that's firing off in the background, let's move on. Let's start exploring... OS tree a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and connect now to the uh, Blade 11. This is a bare metal system. Just kind of poke around what OS tree looks like and how you interact with it. So 
it is it follows a git model if you're not familiar with uh, os tree so the first thing you want to do is is look at what remotes you have set up uh, so you'll see after the deployment i have a uh, centos atomic continuous as well as centos atomic host uh, remote setup so these remotes just like git are going to contain branches so let's take a look at what those branches look like so we'll start with continuous and you'll see I have a number of branches. So I have several alpha branches with different versions. I have a continuous branch and a standard branch. So which branch are we on now? Well, that's what the atomic host status command is going to tell us. So you'll see the bullet dot over here tells us that we are on, on this current branch. So here's the name of it. Here is the uh, the version and, and so forth. So let's say for some reason... Uh, we wanted to move over to the alpha branch. Well, we could do that pretty easily. And all we have to do is specify the RPM OS tree rebase command. Let's go ahead and start that. Now, before I do anything, though, I, I, I keep note of the commit hashes. So we have a CBF, and then we have a uh, 4FA. If you take a look at OS tree deploy, um, we have, we're actually booted into the continuous branch. Let's take a look at that directory so we have a deploy a var take a look at let's go ahead and list these out long okay so we have uh two different directories so we see the the 4fa which corresponds to the alpha branch of centos atomic host and then we have the cb f7 which corresponds to the continuous branch so you can actually explore these um if we continue down let's say we take the four um going to end it at a dot zero and this is now essentially your file system tree and this is the, the one that we are currently booted up into so we can uh, tab and we can see that we have take a look at bin there's bash and and so forth one thing to note the reason that that these are in the os tree directory is you actually can't change the file system uh directly so if we go to uh let's say user bin who we see that it's a read-only file system so if I wanted to take a look a little bit more at what the rest of the system looks like, I can see that there is a user local, which is a symlink to slash var slash user local. So that gives you that Unix-like feel, but the point here is that this is a read-only system that you aren't intended to directly manipulate um, on the running system. So once we rebase to one of the new branches that we want, we will have to reboot uh, to get that, that file system tree as active. Okay, I guess one other thing I can show is those remotes are stored in OS tree directory. We can see I've got two here. Those are the two that were listed out, CentOS Atomic Continuous and the CentOS Atomic Host. Let's go ahead and rebase. So I'm going to do an RPM OS tree rebase. If I were to scroll up to what I spit out earlier, let's go and go back to alpha. So I'm going to rebase to the continuous alpha branch. Okay, so what this will do is take a look at the, the currently deployed system uh, versus the, the tree that I've specified and do a diff between them and it's gonna pull down anything that is uh, not already here at the same version. So we can see here that we are moving from atomic 1.12.1 something to 1.11. We also have some other version changes, bubble wrap, uh, Docker, and so forth. If I were to reboot, this is what will happen. So let's go ahead and uh, explore just a few things. Because this is, I'm on, I'm on a blade, this will take a while to reboot. What I'm going to go ahead and do is open up a new window and execute the same command on the, one of the VMs. That way it runs a little bit faster. And oops, I'm going to control C. And by the way, it is safe to control C these commands as they're running. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go ahead and reboot automatically when it's done. Okay, so let's come back over here. All right, what I'd like to do is just kind of explore what happens uh, when I specify a new branch like that. So you saw me looking in those uh, deploy directories. So let's go ahead and do a, another listing. And we have deploy again. So we that branch was already there. So we knew that that existed. Um, but now we should be able to reboot into that. While we're waiting for that, we can take a look at a few other things. So we have user libexec rpm os tree d. You'll see there is essentially a library implementation of rpm. 
Uh, let's play around with that, actually. While I have this system up, there's a finite number of packages that have been installed. I don't have, for example, something like strace. I don't have screen, and I know that. I do have some other commands, like uh, there's a subscription manager um, if I wanted to register the system. So let's say that I needed, uh, right now I needed to use strace, for example. Uh, what we could do is go ahead and, and layer that onto this system so we can install it. So we do an RPM OS tree. Let's go ahead and just list out the operations here. Uh, so we do have uh, an install command, uninstall, um, and a few other things. Let me fire up one more console, and I just wanted to show this is the system that was just installed on VM2, which is a rail atomic host. Now if we do that same command, you'll see that we don't actually have that, that op. So we... Uh, you'll see that it's one of the reasons we're using the development version of CentOS is w um, based on the latest installable ISO image for REL Atomic Host, we don't have access to those latest commands. So we can actually enable that on the REL system. And this does take a while, so I'm going to go ahead and kick that off now just so that once we get back to that point, we can add, uh, go ahead and demonstrate more commands available in the latest version of Atomic Host for REL. So I'm going to go ahead and I do have this available internally to me. Um, so I'm going to add that repo and then RPM OSG rebase. I should note here that this can be accomplished a lot more simply by using subscription manager to register the system and doing an atomic host upgrade. But we'll demonstrate that in a little bit on a different system. All right, so I'm going to let that fire off. Let's go back to our bare metal host here. Okay, uh, we were talking about wanting to install something. Let's say that we wanted to install uh, S-Trace. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to stage this by doing RPM OS tree install. Uh, let's just say S-Trace. Okay, so we see that we have layered a package onto our current tree. Uh, however, it's not installed yet, as we can see by attempting to run the command. We do have to reboot uh, into this new commit hash. So let's take a look at our status. Okay, so we're currently booted into this branch, the continuous, uh, but we want to boot into a new commit hash, which starts with 918, which is enabling this strace pack. So if we go back to what we're looking at under OS tree, deploy. Now we see uh, the 918. And as I did before, we can actually traverse down that directory. And we should see S trace. There we go. So that has now been deployed into this new tree. We just need to reboot into it to uh, have access to it. Uh, one of the thing we can do is another LS. Let's look at the inodes of OS tree of our current commit um, tree that we're in. And let's compare that to slash. And as you see, there are they are the same. So that's just showing that um, that is the currently booted OS tree. OK, uh, so we could use that. Uh, we could reboot and have access to strace, but I want to demonstrate one other uh, feature that we have. Let's say that we mistakenly staged something. Uh, we don't want to actually um, have that available. Then we can actually undeploy it. I'm just going to repeat this command on the VM, have that reboot, and we can verify that uh, while at the same time allowing us to continue with the undeploy command. So let's go ahead and start that. And oops, we're not in the correct. We're in an older version of Atomic Host. So let's take a look. So this alpha version, as you saw, we, we kind of went backwards. We downgraded a little bit. So we don't have the install command. You'll see that we have package add uh, preview. So we can actually do the same thing. RPM, OS tree, package add, S trace. Now this is uh, essentially, that verb has been renamed. Uh, package add in the continuous version is now referred to as install. So that just shows you a little bit of a difference there. So I'm going to add that and reboot once it's done, but I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I want to actually undeploy that. So um, OS tree admin undeploy. So this is going to delete that deployment. So 
So 918 should be gone now. There we go. And if we look again in OS tree deploy, uh, we'll see that that is now in fact gone. Okay. Let's, uh, we'll wait for this VM to uh, reboot and then we'll take a look at S trace being enabled. Just once again, there is no S trace. So we'll go ahead and let that reboot and that should come back pretty quickly. So let's uh, take a look at deploying a specific version. Right now, there's not a very easy way to look at uh, previous versions or available versions, but um, uh, in, in a real deployment or production scenario, you're, you're going to have a history of the different versions that you've staged for your system. So in our case, what I'm going to do is uh, atomic host deploy, and I'm just going to basically take this version, and I want to knock this down a few. So let's say we want to go to version 170. So we can do that as long as there is a version 170 that exists. And then I'll, I'll let that finish and, and reboot. Now, while that is going, let's switch back over to our VM, which should be rebooted as we see up here in the upper right hand. It's now good to go. And let's check our status. Okay, similar to what we saw on the uh, bare metal server before we decided to undeploy it. We are now booted into the uh, version 106, but this one has S-Trace enabled. There we go. So we have S-Trace, and we could again take a look. Uh, let's see, what was our status again? Yeah, that was the base commit, and then we layered on top of that. So uh, that would be user, then S-Trace. There we go. Now we're, now we're cooking. Okay, so let's switch back over to our bare metal system. It is ready to reboot. Let's go ahead and do that. Now this one will take a while. Um, and this was the one that's on the console now, and there we go. We saw it rebooting. And let's head back over to our VM, which is much faster. Let's check on VM2. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, here we go. So uh, VM2, we did add a, an internal remote with the latest rel, uh, and it rebooted when it was done. So let's take a look at it, see where we're at. Okay. So previously we deployed version 7231. We're uh, this was based on the uh, rel atomic host uh, bootable image. So we have now moved to version 7.2.7, .7, which is based on this date, uh, September 8th. Um, this is, as I mentioned, the latest install image available to Pixie Boot. Um, so this is how you would have to deploy rel atomic host and then bring that up to date by uh, essentially performing the commands I did and um, booting into the latest tree. What we showed before is that we didn't have some of those verbs available. Uh, and now we can see that we do have package add and remove available as preview, but we're, we're not running as current as the continuous branch of CentOS. So we don't have the uh, install verb, but that's fine. This gives us uh, close enough to what we're looking for. So, all right, let's move on. So the next thing we want to do is look at a composed server. So Compose Server allows you to host those remotes and branches so that you can add your own custom content and modify the package sets that are installed onto the tree. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open up a new terminal. Okay. So I'm in my directory here. And what I'd like to show is I have a couple of... Uh, actually, these aren't relevant. These are just the diagrams I showed earlier. But we have um, a YAML file, which is a playbook, an Ansible playbook, and then I have a host file. So I'd like to take a look at the host file first. And what we have here is the host that I have already talked about and that I showed in the diagram. Uh, I have an all, um, all variables set to my SSH user to be root. So I have one host group called compose. So this is going to be the server that I use. This is representing that, uh, that center server that I mentioned earlier. That is going to be this one here. So that's going to be the compose server. And then I have my atomic VMs are another host group, which is, um, 10, 11, 1, 69, 71, and 72, which you've seen me SSH to. Then I have atomic VMs, which are the bare metal servers, 61 and 62. Then I have a group called atomic, which contains these two subgroups that I just defined. Um, so in the end, this means I, I basically have two host groups that I care about, compose and atomic. Uh, then I have some variables here, and that's just for the destroy uh, command that I showed earlier. Uh, I probably could have had that dynamically detected, but uh, anyway. Okay, so this is my playbook. 
which contains two plays. The first one is going to target the compose host group. And I'm going to define a couple of variables here, which can be overridden very easily from the command line. But this is essentially the tree name that I want to use, the branch name, and where my repo server is. And as I mentioned, it's going to be the same server here. Uh, so we're just setting the IP address. And I'm just going to go through and essentially create a, a directory to host the, the tree, create a cache directory. I'm going to install git and rpm os tree. Uh, make sure it's there, of course. This should all work idempotently. Uh, and for that reason, here on this git line, I'm going to be cloning this repo and checking out the down, downstream branch. However, on subsequent runs, if I've changed anything in that downloaded directory, which is obviously the point because I want to customize, then uh, this clone will fail. So I want to ignore any failures in that case. I could force it, but I, that's not what I want in this case. I want to keep any customizations. Um, then I'm going to run some OS tree commands. So this is going to create a build repo, and it's going to be at the directory location, and uh, it's going to be called build, uh, sorry, repo build. And then I'm going to have what's called an export repo, and that's going to be uh, at that same location slash repo. Next, I'm going to create a make file. Now, this is just for convenience. I uh, am essentially just including three uh, commands in here. So we have RPM OS tree compose, which is going to be the actual command that goes through and looks at my atomic build script um, JSON file and then uh, build the tree based on that. Then we have a pull local, which is going to pull this um, out of the build repo into the export repo. And then the last command is to simply going to specify a summary so that we can do the OS tree remote refs command that we saw earlier and list the branches. So we put this in a make file uh, simply so that it's easy. Every time we make a customization, we can just run make. Um, you know, this, of course, could be a bash script or just run the commands independently, but uh, this is convenient. Okay, next I'm going to customize the JSON. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute, but this does take a while, so I want to kick it off pretty quickly and, um, and then come back and take a look. In fact, let me do that now. Let me go ahead and open up a connection to that server. Okay, so I'm going to connect to my server, which you see is IBM Blade 10. That's my bare metal server. I'm just going to take a look here in SRV, where you'll see there is nothing at the moment. And then I'm going to switch back over to my laptop. And I'm going to actually run the playbook and then uh, go back to describing what's going to happen. I'm going to specify the host. And because I have the play specify what the target host group is, I don't have to limit uh, or anything like that. So do a demo here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so let me switch back over and continue talking about this while that's running in the background. Um, in fact, we can reduce this a little bit um, and see some of the output. Okay, uh, so I was talking about the make file. Once the make file is complete, we're going to start customizing the JSON. So this is where we're going to edit the SIG Atomic build scripts JSON file, and I'll pull that up here in a minute. All right, so let's take a look and see what we have there. So we actually have a directory which is created based on the name that we specified as a variable. So let's take a look in here. So we have uh, some directories. I mentioned repo and repo build. Uh, there's the make file, there's the cache directory that was created, and then the SIG atomic build script. So again, looking at the make file, it's just simply the three commands I mentioned. If we look at the SIG atomic scripts and we just, okay, so I just want to take a look and see that we did get the custom name that we specified in the playbook. Uh, so let's go ahead and just run make and then continue looking at the playbook itself while this runs. Okay. Once it's done, the intention here is that you run make. So if we go back and look at the command line, the playbook actually pauses. That's intentional. We're done with the play. We're going to pause until we're ready because we can't move on until uh, this uh, the make is done. And again, you could do that in the playbook and that probably makes sense, but it's more appropriate to do it maybe asynchronously and pull it, but uh, I, I prefer seeing the output so we can understand what's going on. Okay, once that's done, the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this manually on one host first just so that we understand what's happening, um, but then I'll uh, resume the rest of the playbook and allow it to uh, perform the rest of these commands. So against the atomic host, which are going to be my two bare metal and two virtual systems, uh, I'm going to specify the variables again that I need. So compose server, now that it's complete, we should know that. And the tree name and branch name again. Uh, you'll see a number of debugs here. The reason for that is I'm going to view the various uh, commands and then output them to the screen so you can see that interactively. 
in a sense from the playbook command line. So I'm going to look at the atomic status and then I'm going to do a remote list and then I'm going to add the the new remote. So OS tree remote add and this is essentially the new branch name that I created. So uh, my OS and then demo and then point to the remote, the, the actual URL that we need, list the remotes again, list the refs and then RPM OS tree rebase into that. And once we do that, we should reboot and see that we have the new custom OS. And then we can move on with the rest of the demo. So I'm going to pause here because this takes about uh, six or seven minutes and return. Okay, so this is done and we can now add this remote to one of the servers or to all of them. I'm going to do this manually, as I said, and then we'll come back to the playbook. We'll press enter and it will continue. Or we do this on one of the VMs, that way it's a little bit quicker. Let's go ahead and take a look at our remote. We know this is the same as before. Uh, so what we need to do is add our new remote. This is going to be my OS demo. And I disabled GPG just for this demo. And one thing I forgot to talk about was um, it's going to be outside the scope of what we're doing now but we do want to make sure that that tree is available over um, HTTP. All right, so we see I've uh, served out that SRV directory, and now I can see my contents and my repo. So this is actually what I need right here. We have my, my OS now. And we'll see that we have a branch called demo available. Let's rebase into that. And I'm going to tell it dash R, that way we go ahead and reboot. And there we go. Now we're booted into my own custom tree. The next thing I'd like to do is finish the playbook off. Before I deploy the rest of the atomic host into this tree, I want to sort of remember what we have in here. We have strace installed. We have subscription manager installed. So what I'd like to demonstrate next is that we're going to remove some of these packages. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me switch over to our server. So let's go take a look a little closer at the JSON file that we talked about. So if we go to the Sigatomic build scripts, we'll see there are a number of files in here. If you recall in the playbook, I'll pull that back up here. I had a number of changes that I made to the repos, for example, because I wanted to point to my local repos. So let's take a look at those. So here the, the playbook simply commented out the mirror list and enabled the base URL pointing to my repo server. And that's consistent across the board. In fact, if we do a git diff, that's the beauty of using git here, we can see those changes. So we can see the, re the removal of the two lines and the addition of the uh, lines as well as the GPG. And that occurs across the various repo files but the one that we're really most interested in is the JSON file. So here we have the CentOS Atomic Host JSON, and this is where you would customize your tree. So as you see here, we've taken the default CentOS Atomic Host and changed it to my OS with a branch of a demo. So let's make a few more changes to that. Okay, if we page down, we'll see that we have this packages list. Uh, so this is one of the things that you can customize. So let's go ahead and just demonstrate Let's say, for example, we want to remove something like subscription manager. So we'll remove anything subscription manager related. And then let's say that you're not interested in cockpit. And as you saw me demo from the command line, uh, we are double checking the location of cockpit bridge. Okay, so that will do. Now there is a issue whereby this line here and the remove from packages um, will error out and cause the entire compose to fail uh, since we've removed subscription manager. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well. So that's going to be it. So if we take a look at the git diff of just this file, we should verify uh, what we've changed. So we're going to go ahead and run make again. This time I'm going to run time just to see how long that takes. Okay. We'll go ahead and resume the playbook. And as I said earlier, we typically would have had this as part of the compose play. But I wanted to interact and see the output of make. And and as you see, we're going to run it multiple times. Um, that's why I have that commented out and just paused here. 
we'll go ahead and move forward with that. And what we should see is that all four of our hosts should run these set of plays that I have defined here. If you recall, VM1 is already manually configured as we demoed. So now you'll start to see that it has dropped out of the list of hosts because it failed at some point earlier when it tried to add that remote which already existed. So let us go ahead and scroll back up. We have this play atomic starting and it's gonna run against all four of the hosts. First thing we do is the atomic host status. So we can see, and we are on this rel latest. And by the way, I didn't mention, but we're gonna be rebasing the rel atomic host onto the latest CentOS a custom tree that we built. And you'll see that that does work. Okay, so our bare metal system one is defaulted to this CentOS atomic continuous. Then VM1, as I mentioned, is already on my OS demo. And bare metal two is also on the uh, continuous, but it's on the alpha branch. All right, so we have all four running. We're listing our remotes. We see 71, which is VM1, already has a My OS demo. And thus, because it has it, the OS tree remote ad fails. Now, of course, in a more robust playbook for a production environment, we would have logic around this to detect if the remote is there already or ignore errors or something along those lines. But for this simple demo, uh, this actually is what we want because we don't want it adding multiple remotes to the same place. Okay, so since that host failed out, the other three are going to continue on. So we've added the MyOS demo to all three of these guys. And then we're going to list the refs out. Now we can see that custom uh, branch that we created is there. And we're now going to rebase to that new branch. We'll see that there's now new stage deployment, which is targeting MyOS demo. And these guys are ready to go. So what we need to do now is reboot all, well, just three of them. We don't need to reboot these. Uh, VM1. So let's go ahead and just use Ansible to do that. Uh, so I'm going to target the atomic host group, right, that I've got here. Now, since I'm using, I'm actually not going to use the playbook. I'm just going to use Ansible ad hoc commands. Uh, we're going to specify the host file, and I want to tell it to run the command module. And I'm going to tell it, let's go ahead and just do atomic host status, make sure that our connection's good. We'll go ahead and give these guys a reboot. Now, there is a, a much more eloquent way to do this through Ansible using asynchronous uh, commands, we can actually have the playbook fire off asynchronous reboots on these and then wait for them to, to turn uh, to come back up, but we're just gonna reboot. And in doing so, it's gonna actually sever the connection and uh, there we go, we see unreachable. So that is perfectly normal. And we can see that it's booting up into the MyOS branch. Of course, the bare metal system will take a lot longer going to just use Ansible again. Of course, two of these are going to fail because they're still booting. But let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so Atomic VM1 is in the MyOS branch um, along with VM2, which, again, it was previously rel Atomic Host. Uh, now it's booted into the custom tree that I created. All right, we'll come back to the other two, which are still booting because they're bare metal. Okay, so we removed a couple of things. We should still have S-Trace. And there it is. Do we have subscription manager? And that is actually what we want to see. VM1 failed to rebase because it already had that remote, so the playbook failed, right? So we actually don't have those latest changes. So what I'm going to demonstrate next is an actual upgrade. Let's go ahead and before we do that, we want to double check on one of our other systems. Do atomic host status. We are on my OS. Now do we have S-Trace? There we go. That was not defined in the package JSON list. Ah, it is not there. And neither is Cockpit. Now we're understanding the importance of bringing these systems up to the same tree within the same time frame or making sure that they're consistent. So how would we do that with a system that uh, didn't receive those customizations and was rebased into an earlier version? Well, that's pretty simple. We want to upgrade it. So we can do an atomic upgrade. So this will contact our custom compose server and double check to see if there are any uh, new commits. And in this case, there is one. That VM is now going to rebase to the new tree, which was just built. And we can see what the changes are. If we look, you can see the removed packages, cockpit, subscription manager, and yum. And we're ready to reboot. If we SSH back into VM1, we still have our S-Trace. And that's because we added that custom package so we're actually on a different commit 
uh, than what's on the OS tree, uh, our custom OS tree. So that's why it's very important to make any of these changes uh, for consistency purposes at the Compose server level. But this demonstrates that you can add custom packages or image layers as needed. RPM OS tree uh, DB diff. So this will actually let us take a look at the the actual changes that have happened. So let's first get our commits up. And we want to do a DB diff starting at the, uh, the previous commit to our current commit. And this will show us similar to what we saw when we ran the upgrade earlier. So these are the packages removed. And if there weren't any added, we should see those. And that is all for now. Thank you for watching.